Hello, and welcome to Modern Observability with Open Telemetry. So what do I mean by observability and what do I mean by modern? Traditionally, observability has meant logs and metrics. We all know what those mean. And some people have also used tracing, but it's often seen as sort of a niche tool for measuring latency, involving a lot of sampling. It's kind of weird. Hence the whole three pillars thing, metrics, logs, and tracing. However, I'm here to tell you that this story is wrong. Wrong, I tell you. We don't use tracing metrics and logs in isolation. These aren't really three separate tools. We use them together as a single process for discovering how our systems work. How does this process work? Well, let's be honest. First, you notice that an important metric has gone all squiggly. So you squint at your dashboard, then try to find other metrics that went squiggly at the same time. We've all done this. In the past, I've even used a ruler or a piece of paper to line my metrics up and see what was actually moving. Hopefully, by looking at your dashboards, you find a correlation, if you're lucky, and based on that information, you start guessing about what the actual problem might be. To verify that that guess is correct, you start digging around, looking for logs, looking in your configuration files, any kind of evidence as to what the actual cause of the problem might be. The point I'm making is you actually need to correlate across multiple data sources if you want to have any hope of finding the data you need to actually solve your problem. Which means... The whole three pillars thing sucks. So let's smash these three pillars, start from scratch, and come up with a new framework for thinking about observability for the good of humanity. And how we're going to do that is by taking these three different signals and combine them together. So from the beginning, let's start with events. It might seem like an obvious question, but what is an event? I would argue that event is a timestamp and a collection of attributes. So to give some examples, let's say you're an HTTP server, what kind of events are you gonna have? Well, connection and handshake events, there's going to be events around handling the request, parsing the headers, there's going to be response events, when did the response start, when did it end, all of that good stuff. And all of these events are going to have various attributes associated with them. So let's have a look at what some of these attributes might be. There's a lot of attributes because we want to be able to effectively cross-index these events. And if you have a look at them, you'll notice there's a pattern. Some of these attributes are unique to the event. However, most of them are not. A good chunk of them are associated with where the event is taking place. You could think of this as static context that doesn't change, or in open telemetry, the resources associated with the event. So these are things like what server is it running on, what library is it in, what region in your infrastructure cloud is it running in, that kind of stuff. There are also attributes which are specific to this run of this operation, but they're shared across all of the events in the operation. So if you're talking about an HTTP request, that request as a whole has a start time and a duration. There's a status a method, a path. There might be some application specific information, for example, the account ID and the project ID extracted from the URL. And you want all of the events in this request to be associated with these attributes. So we can think of these attributes as describing the operation in which these events are occurring. Also, we care about causality. A leads to B leads to C. So we want to take these events and put them in a graph. And the way we do that is by adding more attributes to the operation. There are four specific attributes that you need. The trace ID, which represents the overall transaction that these events are occurring in the span ID, which represents the operation these events are occurring in, the parent span ID, which represents the operation that caused this operation, and finally, a stable name for the operation so that you can compare across multiple runs of the same operation. So here's the thing. Adding all of this context to your events turns them into traces. Why is this important? It's important because finding your logs sucks. When you have a large distributed system with lots of concurrent operations occurring across lots of different machines, it can become really hard to find the logs that you want. You have lots and lots of logs, and the bigger your system gets, the more spread out the logs in that one particular transaction become. So it becomes harder and harder to find them. If you don't have this context, 
The way you reconstruct this transaction is by doing a ton of filtering and searching. And none of that filtering and searching can be easily automated because you haven't indexed these events properly. However, finding all of the events in a trace is easy. It's a single lookup. If you have one event, you just look at its trace ID and bam, now you have all the other events in that trace. Likewise, you can look at the span ID and see all the other events that are just in that particular operation. This saves a huge amount of time. Given how straightforward it is to find all of the logs you want when you've got these IDs, why would you not put these IDs on your logs? In other words, tracing is just logging with all of the indexing that you want to actually find your logs. So really, tracing and logging are not actually two separate tools. Okay, so those are events, but let's talk about events in aggregate. When we're looking at events over time, we want to find patterns and be alerted when bad patterns appear. So some of these patterns might be an attribute occurring too often, like the number of errors or the 500 status code. So you wanna be able to count how many times that attribute shows up on an event. Alternatively, you may be looking at the value of an attribute and seeing if it exceeds a certain threshold that you know is bad. For example, latency, a request taking too long. So in those cases, you wanna look at the spread of values. How many requests are taking over five seconds? How many requests are taking one second? How many requests are taking 30 milliseconds? In other words, you want to look at a histogram. And we tend to call these kinds of aggregations that we're alerting on metrics. But here's the thing. We don't just want metrics. What we want are correlations. We want to know what caused the alert. So for example, we don't just want to know that there's high latency. We want to know that that latency is correlated with a specific Kafka node. That would tell you a lot of information about where you needed to look. Or for example, if there's a sudden increase in error rate, you'd want to know that many of those new errors are strongly correlated with a specific project, as opposed to being evenly distributed across all the projects. That would probably tell a developer a lot of information about where they needed to look next. And we want to know these correlations because we ultimately want to find the root cause of the problem and fix it. Looking at these kinds of correlations isn't exactly what we would call metrics but it is analyzing events in aggregate. It's not just a single standalone metric because these correlations might occur in multiple ways. They might occur between attributes in a single event. They might occur between multiple events in a trace. They might occur between traces and the resources those traces are passing through. In other words, when you're looking at a metric and that metric has set off an alert, the next thing you wanna look at is the transaction you're going to want to see the actual events that generated that particular metric. And if your logs and your metrics are in completely separate systems, then connecting these alerts with the transactions that caused them and finding the root cause is going to be very painful. To solve this problem, your aggregates, aka your metrics, need to be built from trace data. Therefore, tracing is not just a niche tool. Tracing is the glue that connects all of this data together in a way that allows you to find correlations. So what is modern observability and how is it different from traditional observability? The difference is that we now have data structures which enable automated analysis. Now it's important to note that machines can't find the root cause or fix it for you. You're still going to have to do that. The reason for that is finding a root cause is subjective. It's a judgment, it's an interpretation of the data that you're looking at. Machines are not going to be able to do that with a high degree of accuracy. Understanding what's fundamentally wrong and how to fix it is basically a form of the halting problem. However, machines can definitely find correlations and fix relevant data for you because that's objective, provided you have the data structures that allow them to do that. Being able to automatically find those correlations and associate your metrics with your logs, with your traces, that saves you time. It saves you lots of time. It saves you tons of time. So much time that it actually changes the way you observe your system. If you can move fast and fluidly through all of this data, instead of spending lots and lots of time collating this data and trying to find the correlations yourself, making hypotheses and checking them becomes a rapid fire activity. In other words, you're spending all of your time thinking about how to solve the problem instead of finding the data that would let you think about 
how to solve the problem. So what is open telemetry? Open telemetry is the data structures which enable this automated analysis and save you time. Open telemetry provides the context for what happened and the context for where it happened. Yes, you will see a metrics API and you will see a logging API and they'll look pretty normal. However, under the hood, those metrics and logs are automatically going to be associated with your traces and resources, which means when you have metrics, you can find the traces that created those metrics. When you have logs, they're organized into a chain of causality automatically. And all of this information is combined into a single protocol called OTLP, which is an efficient way of streaming all of these different types of data to a single analysis tool to look at all of it. So modern analysis is not three separate tools. It's one tool that uses all of this data together so that it can synthesize these correlations and allow you to easily move from one data point to another, moving from metrics to traces, to logs, to profiling, back to metrics. You get the picture. And FYI, one tool that takes all of this data and combines it together is Lightstep, where I work. But there are other tools as well. Anyways, that's my talk. That's modern observability and how open telemetry fits into it. If you'd like to dive deeper, I have a couple other talks that dig into context propagation, which is how this stuff actually works, and also the value of design, which explains how open telemetry brings observability to open source software. Hope you liked it. Questions, complaints, observations, hit me up on Twitter. I'm Ted Suo. Have fun. Mm -hmm.